Hey guys, so today I'm going to talk about my favorite speculation, and this one is Modern Masters 2017 sealed boxes. I am showing you the real prices on eBay today. These are buy it now prices, so you could get them cheaper in auction if you do well and you time it correctly. But even assuming it's $245 free shipping, this is a very, very good value. The expected value of this set is around $245. I like that a lot. Whenever you can have buy a box at the expected value set, it's not common. Definitely nothing in standard ever gets to that point. And most stuff in modern shouldn't actually get to that point either. The box values are typically way more expensive than the expected value. Here we have, this is why it's a buying opportunity. Now, how much would I want to invest in it? Probably like a few thousand dollars. Again, buyout is happening. I am poor for one more month. I am restructuring the company. Some people will have to move on and then we'll have to get some more people. Whenever you buy a company, it's not a fun process. But let me talk about this. If I had money today, this is where I would put money. And assuming that these boxes don't get too outrageous, I will be buying into it uh, probably at least 10 boxes. I want to have these for a long time. You remind me a lot of Innistrad. Innistrad was a set I still have today. I have a sealed case and I have two loose sealed boxes because my local game store at the time went belly up and that's it went belly up during Innistrad. So I knew that was a good buy at $100, even though he bought it for like 80 or something, 75 or 74. The expected value is there. You have Lily and you have Snap and you have Tamagoyf and you have Caverns. I like it. It's four cards, all about all over $50, let's say. Way better than, way, way better than Iconic Masters, which is Mana Drain and then nothing. Nada, right? So Modern Masters 2017, I would, you know, I, when I look at MTG Finance and stuff like that, they don't really tell you what to buy as directly as I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to stake my reputation on it. Uh, and Falia is a good example. This gives me, I'm getting flashbacks of Falia in a strat seal boxes. Like it's so obvious to me. It, it's like, I can't really, I'm, I'll try to explain it. The expected value, that doesn't happen very much. When a box sealed is worth what it is open, normally if you open enough, if you open about 10 of these boxes, you should be able to get that value. You should be able to break even. That is very good. Now on top of this, there's four cards and the, the spread is better. So I would much rather have four cards at 62, 70, 74, 99 than one card at 400 or one card at 300 that to me i don't like that at all i don't like the mana drain model i think it's very foolish for them to have done this this model makes a lot more sense now what else do you have in it you have the fetch land you have a 71 dollars fetch land you have a 47 dollars fetch land you have a 35 dollars fetch land 34 dollars fetch land 32 dollars fetch land and a 24 dollars blood moon I love Mythics, but Mythics does not make the expected value. It's in the rares. And actually, you have Path to Exile in this set too, which we'll take a look at a little later. But even the cards that are not super expensive, if you look at it in Passing Flames, you look at Ooze. I love them as speculation, so I'm not heartbroken if I got a bunch of them. Abrupt Decay, Stony Silence. This is the real deal. This is what I would buy, and I would buy lots of them. I wouldn't... I mean, depending on how much extra money I have for the store, I would put all my money on, on this gamble. Because it's not really a gamble. The, my only concern is they reprint everything into Oblivion like they've been doing recently. So that is my only worry. But outside of that, every single characteristic I check, every box that I check off, hmm, is expected value good? Yes. Are there rares that are valuable? Yes. Is the spread even? So that means that even if you open a whole box and you do very bad, you're likely to at least get one fetch land, right? 
So the ceiling is capped. It always is capped by the expected value or the price of the box. The price of the box cannot be so low. The expected value cannot be so much above the price of the box. That If that was true, then the box price would either go up or every box would be open. But I like the spread. It even has damnation. I don't know if you guys remember that card. It was kind of a big deal, kind of a meme. This is a... You're not going to have that many more opportunities to really make money in Magic. Falia was probably the last great speculation, in my opinion, which it can go from $2, which means you buy for $2, and it can go to $20. You're not going to see that anymore. Uh, there's too many reprints. Uh, standard is kind of bad. Our, our standard is printed into oblivion. There's just way too many reprints. Falia is lucky. She's very lucky, and I knew that she would be difficult to reprint because she's so set specific. I knew they could print Liliana of the Veil over Falia, that Lily would get printed, reprinted before. Now, when the promos came out, whatever those promos were, that's not like 200 bucks, that was actually good because I was like, okay, they're going to leave Falia alone for a little bit. And she was always this powerful. But she was never in danger of being reprinted given the fact that she was a legendary creature that was a 2-1 with first strike that cost two. Those typically don't get reprinted. Um, those fast creatures with abilities, they don't get reprinted in standard because they don't it would be too much. And they don't get reprinted in many of these commander sets because of flavor, right? So he's very in a strad. I knew going into it I could buy as many Falias as I wanted and it would be a good deal. I know going into this at $240, let's call it $240, I can buy any amount of boxes of this and I would be okay. It's got Inquisition and it's got Visions. It has Path to Exile. A ton of these great uncommons as well. Uh, a $7 uncommon is really impressive because out of a whole box it's very likely that you will get some of them because it's an uncommon it's very likely you will get some fetch lands two to four fetch lands i would assume because they're rares and it's very likely you will get one of the four big ones you will get cavern talmagoyf lily you're going to get one or snap you're going to get one of them and they're very very good value they're pretty much one fourth to half the box price already not and that does not include the foils right a foil pack you get a foil mythic a foil rare and maybe even a foil path to exile would have a lot of value this is the box to buy i know a lot of people are trying to sell you all this random stuff and all these like random new boxes no 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 uh you never want to buy a hyped box like if 25th masters is the best box ever i don't know much about it I know Jason Mindscope is in it, and he's just been unbanned, so people are super excited. And I see the price on Modern Masters 25 or Masters 25 boxes steadily go up and up and up because they know that this very expensive Jace is in it. That is not the time to buy. The time to buy is not when everyone is excited and really just, you know, Jace just got unbanned. People are super excited. They're pre ordering and they don't. Even if it's amazing and the pre-order turns out to be great, I still much rather have Mount Modern Masters 2017. I would bet, I would bet all the failures in this set. I would bet all the failures in this set. At the end of the day, you this is the opportunity. I've always liked this set, but you have to wait for the opportunity. The opportunity, you you get very few opportunities that the expected value is worth the same price as a sealed box. I cannot tell you that. That does not happen very often. Unstable is not that way. Eternal Masters is not that way. The last time I saw a set like that one was Innistrad. Innistrad had Geist. It had Lily. It had Snap. Most important, it had those lands that were 5 to $10. Isolated Chapel, all of those. 
if you play during Innistrad, you know what I'm talking about. Those were very expensive lands. It's not like today when the lands are two to three, four dollars a piece. No, back then the lands were ten dollars easy, and they weren't shock lands or fetch lands. They were just buddy lands, and I don't know what it caused, but the expected value was very close to what a box would cost. A uh, eighty dollar box, you could pull about eighty dollars of cards from it, because you only need to hit a snap and some combination of those lands. And this reminds me a lot of this. Instead of Snap, Geist, uh, Lily, you have four. Yes, it costs more. So you, these four cost a multiplier of Innistrad. But in Innistrad, you also had five of those lands, those enemy buddy lands, uh, like Isolated Chapel. That was a very popular one. And you had Snap. I mean, everyone knew how good Snap was at the time. So this is identical to me. I'm looking at really cool stuff, and this is the set to buy. I would put all my eggs in this one basket. I typically do not make videos like this, but I feel very comfortable telling you, you that in a year, this set will outperform pretty much everything else in the market, with a few exceptions that I can't predict at this moment. Anyway, bye guys.